Greetings, everyone. We want to welcome you to another edition of Connecting with God. Today, we're going to investigate a very specific individual in the Old Testament, one that was noteworthy for just how good he was. This is the man, Job. Now, Job is described in the very first verse of the book in four different ways. And these four particular ways serve as a great teaching for us to know how we need to be before God. So let's read this description. Job chapter 1 verse 1 says, There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and upright and one who feared God and shunned evil. Now this description occurs two more times in the book, one more time in chapter 1 and then also in chapter 2, but there are four different ideas that are given to us that explain what kind of person Job is. And more importantly, not only does it explain what kind of person he is, but it also gives us a great template for the way that we need to be. So let's take a look at them. The first idea that's presented is blameless. Now, blameless does not mean sinless perfection. In fact, all it means is someone who has a hearty desire, a hearty zeal to obey and please God. Blameless is from the word to be complete, and it refers to someone's spiritual maturity and their integrity before God. So every single person needs to be a person who is blameless. Again, it's not sinless perfection, but it's someone of maturity and someone of integrity. In fact, some very well-known people in the Old Testament were mentioned as blameless. For instance, Noah was described this way. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 9, it says, These are the records of the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. When we go forward in time to Abram in Genesis chapter 17 verse 1, one of the commands of God to Abram was, When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am Almighty God, walk before me and be blameless. Now being blameless was not just an Old Testament idea because in the Corinthian letter, as Paul wrote to the Corinthians and he's opening the letter itself. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 8, Paul said, And who will also confirm you to the end, that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. So whether you talk about people in the Old Testament or you speak of people in the New Testament, God wants us to be blameless, mature, and people of integrity. The second concept is upright. And literally, that means something that is upright, something that is straight. And that really implies the idea of someone who can comply with God's directions. The same word is translated elsewhere in the Old Testament as righteous, proper, and pleasing. Blameless and upright together talk about just how good Job's moral character really was. He had a great relationship with God, and then that translated into his great relationship with others. And that's borne out in the book. So people who want to be righteous before God are going to be blameless and upright. The third quality that Job had is that he feared God. Now, in both the Old Testament and the New Testament, the fear of God is someone who has a reverent trust in God that's coupled with a righteous hatred of sin. This was someone who was devout. And Abraham, again, is actually another great example of this because in Genesis chapter 22 and verse 12, it says, Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. God could see through Abraham's actions that he was someone who actually feared God. Job was the exact same way. Further along in the Old Testament, there was the good king Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat had taken priests and Levites and made them judges over the children of Israel. 
And he told them in 2 Chronicles chapter 19 and verse 9, And he commanded them, saying, Thus you shall act in the fear of the Lord, faithfully and with a loyal heart. Again, acting in the fear of the Lord, with trust and a hatred of every false way. Finally, in Acts chapter 9 verse 31, in discussing no one specifically, but the church in general in Acts 9 verse 31, it declares, Then the churches throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace and were edified, and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, they were multiplied. Now Solomon says in the book of Proverbs that if you fear God, that is the beginning of wisdom for you. So Job was someone who had a complete priority for God. And guys, this is so important for a child of God. Your utmost priority must be God. A healthy trust for God, a hatred for sin, coupled with being blameless and upright, you're becoming a model man like Job. Now let's talk about one more aspect, and we've already alluded to it, it is that Job, in Job chapter 1, verse 1, shunned evil. Shunning evil means that Job turned away or he stayed away from evil, from wrongdoing. In fact, one paraphrase version put it that he hated evil with a passion. And I actually kind of like that because it's extremely vivid. Here was Job. He was a moral man. He was a good man. And God specially noted, not one time, now this is Job 1 verse 1 that we're studying, not one time, but three times. Job was someone who shunned evil, and that pleased God. As you go through the book of Job, the recollection of his good behavior and his good life begins to be unfolded for the reader. It reaches a climax in Job's final testimony in chapters 29 through 31, but then as we go on through that famous section at the end of Job where God is responding to Job and he's asking all of these many different questions, once that is over, in Job chapter 42 and verse 6, yes, Job repented. There were some statements that he had made to God that were beyond what he should have said. But guys, he was a good man. In fact, in Job chapter 42 and verse 8, the record says, now therefore take for yourselves seven bulls and seven rams. Go to my servant Job and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering. And my servant Job shall pray for you, for I will accept him, lest I deal with you according to your folly, because you have not spoken of me what is right as my servant Job has. Job was someone that as far as other men were concerned, he was above reproach. Why? Because he shunned evil. For every person who wants to fulfill the will of God, they have to be the exact same way. In Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 11, it tells us to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead reprove them or expose them. Stay away from them, just like Job did. A Christian is someone who has been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. The guilt of sin has been removed by His precious sacrifice. So our conduct in public and even in private has to reflect that kind of relationship, that kind of special, holy, spiritual relationship between ourselves and God the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. In Ezekiel 14 and verse 14 and verse 20, Noah, Job, and Daniel were spoken of as the three most righteous men in existence at that point in time. That is amazing. But you know, all that means is that Job had actually lived out the words of Solomon in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is man's all. That was in verse 13. That makes Job a model man. So if you want to live your life and you want to be a righteous individual, think about these four descriptive phrases that I'm going to put on the screen for you right now. This is what made Job so special. This is what made Job accepted by God. 
thanks so much for watching this video, but we want to know what you think. Tell me what your biggest takeaway was from this video down in the comments below. We always appreciate your time. We never take it for granted. So please continue to join us as we go through different series of lessons and different videos and different teachings that will help you grow spiritually. Thank you, and we'll see you again next time.